So something a little bit different today. I'm going to be working with this 8x8 square flat canvas and I'm going to be making a very detailed and deep textured um, artwork. So what I'm doing is I'm just dividing up the canvas into like three sections and then digging out quite a lot of this modelling paste which I picked up on my recent trip to Indigo Blue um, and I'm just going to smear the modelling paste right the way across the top section of the canvas and I'm not putting it through a stencil like this did there, I just want to have a rough kind of texture at the top of the canvas. So for the middle part of the canvas, I do want to add some of that modelling paste through um, some stencils, but I want more than one texture. So to start off with, I'm using the brick stencil from Tim Holtz, and I'm just going to add some of the modelling paste through just about a third of the way into the canvas. So I'm also now bringing out the dot fade stencil. I'm going to add that again about a third of the way from the right hand side this side this time so I'm now leaving a gap in the middle. So just replenishing the modelling paste and to finish that gap in the middle I'm bringing out the eye chart stencil from Tim Holtz again and I'm going to bring the modelling paste all the way down right the way to the bottom of the canvas. Now you can see that there is a gap in the bottom left and in the bottom right so I'm now going to fill that roughly with the modelling paste in the same way that I did at the top of the canvas. So I'm covering up just those gaps that are left. So I have the eye chart one right down the middle and then I have the brick on the left and the dot fade on the right. So I'm just bringing out the heat gun now so what I want to do is just to dry off the top layer of the modelling paste and then I'm going to leave the canvas to dry overnight. It's now the next day and it's dried overnight so it's now time to add some colour to the canvas and I'm using the silks in Olive Vine, Teal Zircon and I'll also be using the Ginger Peach and as a few highlights I'll also be using the Goldfinger Gold Acrylic Paint from Indigo Blue. My silks are pretty old and most of them are still viable but the Teal Zircon one which is the one that I've used the most has now started to dry up and it's quite difficult to actually use so I do have to add quite a bit of moisture or water to this to actually get it to do what I want it to do. So I'm actually going to put the teal zircon as a base layer on the bottom half section of my canvas because um, I want to add colour that's going to run down from the top but I don't want to add the teal zircon last because I want the colours to overlap. Now, you'll see why later on. But the teal zircon goes on first and then I'm going to activate it again with water and let it run from the bottom towards the top and then I'm going to start adding the other colours and then do that in reverse. You'll see what I mean in a bit. Okay, just cleaned off the brush there and you can see I've got a fairly loose kind of base coat of the teal zircon. I'm now going to activate it with water to make it quite liquid and quite runny and then I'm going to allow that to run and drip towards the top of the canvas. Now bearing in mind I have turned this upside down.
So I'm fairly happy with the way the water has run and the way the colour has started to diffuse down into the canvas. So I'm going to grab my heat gun and I'm going to dry that off before I start to add in the more darker and more vibrant colours of the olive vine and the ginger peach. So all that's now dry, so it's time to bring out the olive vine and because this one's still fine as it was when I first purchased it, I'm not going to add any water to it. So just straight from the pot with a dry brush, I'm adding that olive vine um, colour to the top of the canvas. Now I am making sure that I catch the edges of the canvas as well because I don't want to forget those. And then I'm going to just add it um, about a quarter of the way into the, or from the top, towards the bottom. Now I have turned it upside down because it is easy to apply it this way. I don't, don't know why, it's just my preference. So, and I'm scrubbing the colour into all the nooks and crannies of the modelling paste so that there's no white spots. So I'm happy now with how much colour there is on there. So I'm going to bring out my spray bottle and just wet the top and allow the water to soak in and to start to activate all that colour and let it just run and drip down the canvas. Just adding a little bit more, but that's just going to encourage it to move even more. So I'm happy with the way that's turned out, so I'm just going to blot up the excess from down at the bottom, which is going to get covered up a bit later on again with some more of the teal zircon and then the heat gun comes out because I want this dry before I move on to the ginger peach. Okay so it's time to add that beautiful rich colour from the ginger peach so again this colour is still okay I don't need to activate this with water before I take it from the pot so I'm now going to add the ginger peach across that, that middle section of the canvas and I will start to paint upwards as well and start diffusing that colour out. Now this is going to, well, I'm trying to get some kind of um, corrosive, kind of rusty um, texture into this canvas. So this is what I'm aiming for. So this is why I'm brushing the ginger peach up into the other colours as a kind of transitional um, ombre kind of effect from the top down to the bottom. But I want it to look like it's old and corrosive. So I'm happy with how much colour's on there, so I'm just going to have a quick clean up and then I'm going to grab my water again and just give it a quick spritz, let the water sit for a second or two and then tip up the canvas to allow it all to run down. And I'm very happy with the way that turned out. So I'll quickly grab the heat gun because I want it to dry and then I can get on with that final layer of the teal zircon. So now that I have the olive vine and the ginger peach I want to add the final coat of that teal zircon back on there again at the bottom to make sure that the colour is quite vibrant and I can then reverse the process. So again, now that the water's had time to sink into those, uh, the teal zircon, it is a little bit easier to apply. So I'm going to apply a thick-ish coat across the bottom of the teal zircon with the brush, making sure I catch all the sides and the edges of the canvas. And then we're going to activate that again with water. So I'm happy with the colour density of that teal zircon now, so all I'm going to do is just grab my water sprayer and then just put a little bit of the water onto it, allow it to sit and then it will do its own thing. Thank you. 
and for once the paint and the colour has done exactly what I wanted it to do. It's not done anything that I didn't want. So out comes the heat gun and I'm going to get it dry before anything happens to it. So I wanted to add some more gold highlights to it. The silks do contain a mica so they are kind of shiny anyway and um, when you do catch them in the light, uh, which I will show you later on, um, they do sparkle. So that's a really nice added dimension. So grabbing the gold finger gold metallic paint from Indigo Blue, I'm just going to add a little bit onto my craft mat, add a tiny bit of water and then using my fan brush, I'm just going to add some gold splatters around the canvas and I want to try and do it from the top right towards the bottom left. So you will see me more concentrating in that kind of arc from the top right to the bottom left. I'm not going in a diagonal but I'm just going to arc the colours around there so you've got a little bit of, well hopefully encourages a little bit of movement in the canvas. So I'm not going too mad with the colours and the splatters, I've added enough I know when to stop on this one, so I'm just going to have a little bit of a tidy up and then I'm going to get it dried off with a heat gun. So as a finishing touch to the canvas, I do want to dry brush a little bit of that gold paint just across the top of the letters of the eye chart and just to catch some of the highlights on the edges of the texture paste at the bottom of the canvas and maybe a little bit at the top part too. So that's what I'm doing now. So with a dry brush I'm just catching the edges with the gold paint just to give them a little bit of a highlight and then I'm just going to grab the, um, the edges of some of the raised sections of the, that deep texture paste just to give that a little bit of a catch too. And that's it. I'm happy with the canvas and I'm going to call that a day. I'm going to stop there because there are times when you go a little bit too mad and you end up putting on too much but that for me is enough. So I'll just show you that, sh that shine now. So I'll just freeze frame. Can you see how the lights got those letters? Absolutely beautiful and that's exactly the way I wanted it to be. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed watching this canvas being created from start to finish and if you have please remember to give the video a thumbs up so YouTube know that you want to see more from me and they will recommend my channel to other people who may not have yet found me. If you have enjoyed it then please remember that you can share the video with all your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.